Welcome back to Network Africa. It's a very eventful day in Uganda and a very busy one for President Yoweri Museveni, who is not only rounding off his campaign, but also made some time to make history this morning. President Museveni has officially launched what is Africa's first solar-powered bus in Uganda. You recall that we gave you an exclusive a few weeks ago when it was first unveiled. Well, today was the official launch. The president tested the bus with the CEO of Kira Motors, who you can see on your screen right now. That's the manufacturing company of the bus. However, the president also sees the opportunity to promote his campaign and also badmouth the um, opposition on Twitter while partaking in the event. Here are some of the tweets which he sent out on social media. The first one says, I've just launched Kayola bus at Kampala Serena Hotel. The bus designed by Kira Motors Corporation uses solar. The second tweet says, such innovations expose people who say Uganda's education has been watered down. The third one says, I wish the opposition leaders had been invited here to see this for themselves. The fourth says, this is the best way to go with clean energy as much as we earn income from other sources of energy. Joining us from Kampala, Uganda, is the CEO of Kira Motors. That's the manufacturers of, the, of Africa's first solar-powered bus, Mr. Paul Musa Sisi. Mr. Musa Sisi, thank you very much for joining us on Network Africa. The pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine. And the pleasure is ours as well. I must say congratulations again. When you actually started this project, did you imagine that your president would be launching it like he did today? Um, when we do this work, we really do not do it for the medals, but mm -hmm. we are humbled and pleased to have the leader of government, the first gentleman involved in uh, continuing to show the rest of the world that uh, in Uganda, science and technology innovation have first line on a uh, right of way and have been identified as a way for championing and contributing to the transformation of our economy into a middle income economy by 2040. So, very happy that His Excellency found time out of his busy schedule to come and interact with us, to come and celebrate with us. Come and celebrate with Africa today. No, what, what are your goals now that it's been it's been officially launched? What are your goals for this power, um, solar powered bus? Yeah, so uh, taking taking next steps, we are going to uh, investigate further how we can continue to refine the technology in terms of what solar can contribute to, especially mass transportation in the urban centers of Africa. On the other hand, we are rolling out mass production of vehicles in Uganda in 2018. Now, what's going, what's going on as regards partnership besides Uganda? Because obviously, obviously this is something that other countries like Nigeria can profit from besides Uganda. It's critical for us that we live with the vitality and experience that's already on our African market today, but also that we are able to uh, tap into markets outside Uganda as potential clients, as a way of sustaining the business model. And our priority actually is producing not only for, uh, for mm -hmm. consumption in Uganda, mm -hmm. but also for export to the rest of the market in Africa. And we also think that in Africa today, there are so many talented people who are not necessarily Ugandan. And as we build a better Africa, we do believe that we should bring those people in Uganda or work with them wherever they are to contribute to this renaissance and revolution which should see Africa being a leader in automotive engineering and manufacturing. Final question. The president who we saw with you seemed to be so impressed that he's actually using this um, launch, official launch, as a platform to promote his campaign. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, it's very interesting when you look into market analysis and issues to do with what factors are, are fundamental to uh, external to your business that can influence your market. There is usually a model known as Pestel, and one of the issues is politics. So business cannot exist and cannot be devoid of politics. They are all intertwined and they work together to deliver each other. So him as a champion of science and technology, I don't see a problem with him celebrating and showing the rest of the people that he has accomplished something, he has championed something, he's studying for something valuable and challenging them to step up to this camp if ever they are to get into office in the near future. Well, Mr. Musa Sizi, thank you very much for joining us again and congratulations one more time. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me.
Now, solar is officially the new electricity, not just for Uganda, as you saw just now, but also South Sudan. As businesses and consumers begin to work towards change in the aftermath of the historic agreement on climate change, many are concentrating on renewables, especially on the continent. One business is looking to transform lives in South Sudan in an affordable way to help people in some of the poorest parts of the world. Solar is officially the new electricity. It's an even bigger gift for families living in rural communities in parts of Africa who have been off the grid for such a long time that even reading has to be confined to daylight hours. Azuri, a British company specializing in solar power, is trying to change that by making their power systems not just available in heart to rich parts of the continent, but by making them affordable. Typically our customers can't afford to buy our systems, but they are spending a disproportionate amount of money on poor lighting solutions such as kerosene and mobile phone charging at home. So our systems are installed for a small fee. They're then paid weekly or four weekly um, through a top-up system. Uh, if they don't top up, the lights switch off. And then after between 12 and 18 months, the customers can unlock the system and then access the energy for free. For many, choosing these solar power systems, it's the affordability that could be the difference. The system is paid for over a period of time by the user buying top-up cards from local sellers, similar to those many across the world have used to add credit to mobile phones. Once the credit has been added to the solar power system, using a text from a mobile phone message, it will allow the solar energy stored in the battery and charged from the solar panels on the roof of the house to power the lights and mobile phone charging station. Typically, Reynolds provides between 8 and 10 hours of lighting for the two light version, cheaper than kerosene needed for the equivalent period while the solar battery allows them to charge their mobile phones on top of that. Africa represents um, a very concentrated market for our, for our customers. Essentially, our systems work for off-grid communities. It's not about on-grid, it's not about replacing the grid access, it's about replacing very poor energy solutions such as you know, kerosene and uh, for light and, and mobile phone charging at market stalls. And so the biggest concentration of off-grid uh, customers is in Africa and also Coincidentally, so is the best sunlight. Azuri estimates that around 250,000 people are now benefiting from the access to electricity that their system provides. So to come on Network Africa, Angelique Kijo sends a shout out to the continent after winning the Grammy Award for World Music Album.